The ceremony upon which we are now entering is the swearing in of the new governor of New South Wales. I will first ask the secretary to read the commission from Her Majesty the Queen under the Royal Sign Manual and the commission appointing Rear Admiral Sir David James Martin, KCMG AO. Elizabeth II, by the grace of God, Queen of Australia. I will now ask the Chief Justice to administer to Sir David Martin the oath of allegiance. Please take the Bible in your right hand and repeat the oaths. I, as they appear David on the James stomach. Martin, do swear that I will well and truly serve Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, in the office of Governor of the State of New South Wales in the Commonwealth of Australia. And so the 34th Governor of New South Wales takes up residence at Government House, Sydney. New South Wales, birthplace of modern Australia, is governed by a parliament elected by the people. A perfect example of democracy at work. Covering more than 800,000 square kilometres, New South Wales abounds in wheat, sheep and cattle, helping to feed the nation and contributing a great deal to our exports. From Mount Kosciuszko, the highest peak in Australia, with its superb playground for winter sports, to the world-famous beaches stretching 1,900 kilometres along its coastline, New South Wales has much to attract people from overseas, tourism being one of the state's major industries. Sydney. The state's capital and Australia's commercial centre is acknowledged as the gateway to Australia. The Harbour Bridge and the Opera House being landmarks recognised around the world. And here, in a tranquil bush setting, the contrast with the vibrant city, surrounded by one of the most beautiful harbours in the world, is Government House, the future home of the new Governor of New South Wales. The new Governor enters Government House, a far cry from the portable canvas and timber structure which Captain Arthur Phillip, the first governor, brought with him from England in 1788. On the walls in the entrance foyer and in the great hall hang portraits of previous governors, names that are themselves woven into Australia's history. Above the portraits is displayed each governor's coat of arms, an heraldic emblem that dates back to the days when knights carried a personal insignia on their shields to identify them when they wore armour. The coat of arms is also engraved into the outside walls of Government House. Each of the governors had his own distinctive identity and carried out his duties in his own style. Each left added benefits as a legacy for the people of New South Wales. Captain Arthur Phillip the first governor was sent here to found a convict settlement. He laid the foundations of a nation. Sir Philip Game, appointed in 1930 at the height of the economic depression, gave up a quarter of his salary to help the state's finances. Game took the unprecedented step of dismissing the Premier, J.T. Lang, and his cabinet over Lang's refusal to pay state revenue to the Commonwealth. In 1809, Governor Lachlan Macquarie opened the first school for Aboriginal children and made the first official attempt to settle Aborigines in agriculture. With vision, he said, one day a great city will be built on the shores of Sydney Harbour. To protect parkland for future generations, he decreed that Mrs Macquarie's chair, the botanical garden adjoining Government House, and Hyde Park should never be built on. Surrounded by examples set by previous governors, Sir David and Lady Martin must now prepare themselves to make their own contribution to the history of New South Wales. I think it's always been important, and it particularly is today, that people understand what the office of governor is all about, what Government House is for, what the governor and his wife do, and what they look like. And I think if people don't understand those things and don't want to, then we shouldn't have a governor at all. 
Nowadays, we have all the advantages of modern communications to help us to explain ourselves to the people of New South Wales. And I'd like to make full use of the television and the video to do just that.